Obama couldn't enforce red line for five years, takes Trump only 11 months. For roughly five years, former President Barack Obama and his administration dithered while a brutal civil war raged in Syria, giving rise to both the Islamic State group's self-proclaimed caliphate and allowing the Russian military to expand upon their long-held toehold in the Middle East. Now, a mere 11 months after President Donald Trump took office, the Islamic State group is all but crushed, the Syrian civil war has largely wound down to minor skirmishes, and Russia just announced that they will be withdrawing a significant part of their forces in Syria, according to Reuters. Though many suspect Russian President Vladimir Putin's real goal in Syria was to prop up the embattled regime of Bashar al-Assad and defeat the anti-Assad rebel groups, the Russians routinely claimed they were also doing their part to battle the barbaric jihadist group. Now that both groups have been more or less defeated, Putin has essentially declared mission accomplished. For those who wonder how the situation got to where it is today, simply refer back to the infamous red line that Obama drew against Assad, yet failed to enforce when the line was repeatedly crossed. A lengthy piece from The Atlantic produced a compelling timeline of events and provided numerous reasons why various things have come to pass. When it was first revealed that Assad used chemical weapons against his own citizens in 2012, Obama declared further use of those weapons as a red line that would warrant intervention. However, when Assad crossed that line and once again used chemical weapons in 2013, Obama deferred to Congress in the United Nations and essentially did nothing to keep his promise. That provided the opening for Russia to step in as part of an agreement to disarm the Assad regime of the stockpile of prohibited chemical weapons. However, further chemical attacks took place throughout 2014, but because of Russia's presence and veto power at the UN, Obama still did nothing, perhaps out of concern that any action against Iranian ally Syria would scuttle progress on the Iran nuclear deal. Meanwhile, the brutal Islamic State group grew and captured giant swathes of land in both Syria and Iraq, while Russia's military protected Assad's flanks from the jihadists and focused on helping him take out the rebel groups. Fast forward to early April of 2017, just over two months after Trump took office, and Assad made the mistake of using prohibited chemical weapons once again on innocent civilians, according to NBC News. However, this time that sort of action was met with a response from Trump, who enforced Obama's red line by ordering a cruise missile strike against the military base from which the chemical attack had originated. Trump called on all civilized nations to join him in ending the slaughter and bloodshed and terrorism in Syria, and noted that the actions taken were in the vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. Secretary of State Rex Tyson noted at the time that Assad's use of chemical weapons proved that Russia has failed in its responsibility to deliver on that commitment to get rid of Syria's stockpile, and that either Russia has been complicit or simply incompetent in its ability to deliver. Nevertheless, it was made clear that Trump was serious where Obama was not, and it is believed that Assad has not launched another chemical attack since then. Hence, now that Assad knows he can no longer ignore potential consequences from the United States, and both his opposition and the Islamic State group have essentially been defeated, there is no further reason for Russia to maintain their large military presence in the region, which has resulted in their partial withdrawal. To be sure, Russia isn't completely withdrawing all of their military assets from Syria, and have stated that they will keep enough firepower in the region to guard against a resurgence by jihadists and likely against any renewed rebel efforts to dislodge Assad. As for the U.S. forces in the region, they aren't about to go anywhere either. Although a Pentagon spokesman praised the Iraqi forces and the Kurds and Arabs that made up the Syrian Democratic forces who performed the bulk of the grim work against the Islamic State group, the fight isn't completely over just yet, according to a release from the Defense Department. Much work remains to ensure ISIS's lasting defeat and the government of Iraq can count on continuing coalition support as we work together to erase the stain of ISIS and to strengthen the institutions of Iraq's national defense, Pentagon spokesman Army Colonel Robert Manning stated. Thus we see that, five years after Obama's red line, 
and 11 months after Trump took office, what was once a boiling over hot spot threatening to engulf the entirety of the Middle East has been reduced to a low simmer, enabling all sides to step back and begin the process of standing down. Please share this story on Facebook and Twitter so everyone can see how President Trump actually enforced former President Obama's red line in Syria and brought about the conditions for potential peace in the region. What do you think of how Trump did what Obama only promised to do? Scroll down to comment below, comment below.